This is the 10th lecture for MA 1012, University College Cork. In this lecture, we'll look at linear equations. Let's start with a simple example of, of a system of linear equations that might occur in a real-world application. We have a, 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 um, a circuit. Uh, we study the circuit using two uh, Kirchhoff's laws. One is that uh, current in uh, equals current out at any junction. And the second one is that uh, in any loop, um, the sum of, of the um, voltage drops uh, across resistors is equal to the sum of voltage increases. So we'll see how to apply that. If you're not familiar with that, that's fine. We'll see how to apply that in a simple setting of an actual um, uh, of an actual circuit. And uh, this, of course, leads to Ohm's law, which is the the voltage we're dealing with is is the current times the resistance. So um, so let's let's see if we can do this. Even if you haven't seen anything about circuits before, we should be able to work out a simple example. So make a simple circuit, um, something like this. Uh, we make a little resistor, which I don't know how to draw very well, um, something like that, then another one, and then another one. However it is you're supposed to draw those things, I'm no engineer, I don't know how to draw these things. And then come back again, and uh, we'll put wire in here with some resistance, and then wire in here with some resistance. And then, uh, so that should be our circuit, then we'll have... Uh, here we'll have some some source uh, uh, with 20 volts coming in here. We'll have a current uh, I1 here, then resistance, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, and 10 here. Um, now there's going to be, let's see, some... Uh, current here, I2, we're going to call the current down here, I5, this one's I4, uh, this one's I2, uh, and then uh, this one will be called I6. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of variables that have been drawn around a bunch of pieces of wire, and if you don't know anything about what that means, um, we can certainly try and figure out what does the first thing you mean when we have any junction, that's when we have wires coming together like this. We have to figure out what's going in and what's coming out. Going in is, in this case, I1. Going out is I2 and I... Uh, sorry, I've got them labeled. Oh, this is wrong. This is I3 and I2. Um, so that gives us a result that um, from this splitting of this I1 into an I2 and an I3, we have that I1 is I2 plus I3. Um, and similarly, for the next splitting, uh, I3 has to split into I4 and I5. 3 is I4 plus I5 at that other at this junction here. Then we have a junction at I6, which is I4 plus I5 coming in to produce I6. So I4 plus I5 is I6 coming in there. And then we have this one, which is I2 plus I6 is I1. Those are some linear equations on the various I variables. But that's only from the first law. That's from the law about the junctions. The law about the, the loops. We only have to test enough loops to go all to, to, to try all the way around. All the other loops are built out of these three simple loops here. So we'll start with just those. And we, those, are the only, those are the only ones we need to write down. Um, we get that. 20 um, coming from this guy here has to be equal to 10 times this 10 times this I1 here and this 10 times this I2 here as we go around this loop. We get a 20 coming in this guy this way, but it has to equal the stuff from the other parts of the loop, that plus that. So we get 20 equal to uh, 10 I1, 10 I1, that's to 10, that's the I1. Here's a 10 and an I2 plus 10i2. 
Uh, similarly, we get uh, from this loop, we get 10i3. Uh, then we get 10i3 here, and we get 10i4 here. And then this is going to be equal to um, uh, 10i3 plus 10i4 is 10i2 here going this way. So this has to add up, and there's 10i2 here. Um, so going around that way, going around that way, I have to give the same answer, and that's going to be this law here. And then finally we have that 10i4 equals 20i5, which comes from this one here. You've got 20 there with the i5, and you've got 10 here with the i4, and they have to match up to go around the loop one way or the other way. Even if you know nothing about electric circuits, which is fine, um, then you can follow that there are two laws and that they somehow tell, tell us how to read off at these junctions uh, how the incoming I relates to the outgoing I's and at these loops how the uh, these sums as we go around this way have to be related to the sum going around the other way um, multiplying the resistance times the current. So that's the um, way we can interpret these laws now, this is now a huge collection of linear equations, all of those equations all put together, and they all involve the, vari involve the various uh, variables, all of which we think of as unknown, i1, i2, i3, i4, i5, and i6. Um, the first uh, useful observation is that there, there are, in fact, uh, is a 20 and a 10 and a 10. So if you divide everything by 10, it has the same answers. All we're interested in is finding the answers. What's I1? What's I2? What's I3? What's I4? What's I5? What's I6? So we have to find those six unknown quantities from all of these equations. We can knock off factors of 10 because they don't, they're just constants. They don't affect anything. And that makes it uh, into a much simpler collection of equations. The next trick, which will work for any system of equations, uh, any system of linear equations, is to write them out in a column form which is convenient. So we're going to take all those equations and we're going to write them out in the following simple format. We're going to write out the first equation has an I1, um, but then we're going to write it as I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. So we can put the I2 coefficient here and the I3 coefficient here. That's this equation here written as this stuff equals zero. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I, so over here, I can put equals 0. That's this equation. I1 is I2 plus I3. I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals 0. I'm writing them out so that the I1s are all in, on, on top of each other. I2s on top of each other. I3s and so on. So it's in columns associated to the variables. And the constants are going to go over on this side. So, um, so the next equation is going to be I3 uh, equals I4 plus I5. So I3 minus I4 minus I5 equals 0. Then the next equation is I4 plus I5 and that's minus I6 if we want it to be on the same side. We want to put all the variables on this side and then equals 0. That's this equation written out here. Now we can go on to the next one. Uh, we have I2 so it's maybe best if I give myself some sense of columns um, so that I don't mess it up. Although it's done in the notes without columns. Um, but we can write them like this. And then the next equation I want is this I2. I have I2 plus I6 equals I1. Uh, so, oh, sorry, this should, this should have been I2, should have been here. I2 plus I6, and this should be minus I1, if I've got it right. So uh, this is I2 plus I6 minus I1 to put it on the other side, and that has to equal zero. Um, and then, uh, and if I am really careful about this, maybe I'll even put these things into rows so that I don't mess it up, because um, they're beginning to get a bit messy. Okay, so I'm going to put them in rows and columns so I can see what's what. But I'm reading off each row as a single equation. One of these, each one of these equations, this first equation is this first row, the second equation is the second row, and so on. So I've gone as far as this one. Then this one becomes, it's got a 2. I'll put the 2 equals 2. And it's going to be, uh, that's 10, uh, be, uh, I divided off the 10, so that's just I1 plus I2. So I1 plus I2, which would be plus I2. Um, I1 plus I2 equals 2. 
I3 plus I4 equals I2. So I can do it as, um, let me set another row here. I, uh, where are we? I3 plus uh, I4 equals I2. So equals uh, minus I2 equals zero. Um, and uh, do I keep going? Um, so we've now gone as far as we did this one. And now we've got the very last one, which is just I4 uh, equals 20 I5, equals 2 I5, but minus 2 I5 equals 0. So that's how I want to organize them. I'm going to put all the constants over on this side, the equal signs here. I lined up all the I1s, I2s, I3s, I4s, I5s, I6s. And that's the way we're going to do it so that we can organize the computation with large numbers of variables. If you only had one or two variables or three variables even, you might be able to just muck around with that and not have to worry too much about how to organize everything. Once the number of variables becomes very large, you really have to think about how to organize the calculation. Otherwise, you're almost certain to mess it up. In my experience, students dealing with equations this complicated on exams always mess them up unless they uh, organize them very carefully. Another aspect of organizing the whole thing carefully is that I really don't keep, need to keep writing I1, 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 I2, I2, I2. There are too many variables and too many equal signs. It'd be easier if you just dropped the variable names and kept the coefficients. There's one of these I1s. There's a minus one of them here and one of them here. So we could write a very sim similar system. Let's see if we can figure out how to um, simplify that system. Um, so if we can keep it on camera so we can still see it, at least part of it. Um, So, uh, so we have our equations here. Uh, they're not very visible. Um, and if we rewrite them, uh, we had uh, a one i one, uh, and then none, and then none. Uh, sorry, uh, one i one, then none, then none, uh, then minus one of them, then one of them, then none of them. And you can see that compare it with here. Uh, here are our equations. So I want to say these are the i ones. One of them none, none, minus one of them, one of them, and none of them. And oh, and another none of them down here. So if I just write down the, the coefficients and not all the rest, I should have minus one i2s, none, none, one, one, minus one, and zero. And that, so these are all the i1s, these are all the i2s. You can see an institution will put a little uh, parenthesis around the whole thing. It's, uh, it's much con more convenient and much easier to work with and much less likely to make mistakes when I write down, down just the numbers and forget about these are the i3s, forget about all the variable names. So there's 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 of them. When it comes to i4s, oops, I can't see those. Those are there. They're the variable names. Um, so when I have i4s, I have, there were none of them in the first equation, minus one in the second equation, one in the third equation, none, 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 uh, none, oh, sorry, one, and then uh, one in the very last equation. So it looks like that. Hopefully we can compare that to what we had before. We see um, the I4s, there were none, minus one, one, zero, zero, one, one. I hope I'm getting all that right. Okay, so then, when it comes to I5s, um, we had uh, none of them, minus one of them, one of them, none, 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 and minus two of them. Then when it came to I6s, there were uh, none of them, none of them, minus one, oops, my, that's not very clear, minus one of them. These are supposed to be horizontal rows. It should be easy to read off if I wrote them neatly. Uh, one of them then uh, none, none, none. And then we have constant terms, um, which we can write out uh, in, um, we often write a, a vertical bar to indicate where all the equal signs came from. There used to be equal signs in these equations. Um, so comparing again our previous equations, we had all these, all this junk with all the variables, and then we have all these equal zeros. And so I can just put the, the constants down that were on the, on the, um, the right-hand side of all the equations, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, 2, 0, 0. And this is called the augmented matrix. It's augmented because it has the constants down here. The 
augmented matrix of the system of linear equations. So we started with a real system of linear equations coming from a real um, circuit, and we came up with this augmented system of this augmented matrix for the equations. And it's it's actually going to be much easier for us to compute using this thing than it would be to actually write out all the equations with all the variable names in them and all the equal signs in them, uh, because the variable names are messy and they're complicated. They make this into a much more complicated system much harder to write down. This is much easier to manage. We'll find it, we can manage it much more quickly and not only, most importantly, more accurately. We're not gonna make mistakes as often as if we did, if we wrote out all the equations with all the variable signs in, we'd, uh, all, the, all the variable names in them, we'd almost certainly mess it up because it's too complicated. Now, if you wanted to recover the original equations, you know that's how many I1s, I2s, I3s, I4s, I5s, and I6s and constants you have to put in. So you can read this off as I1 minus I2 minus I3, equals zero. This one you can read off as I1 plus I2 equals two. So you can read off from this very easily what the original equations were, but you're less likely to make mistakes when you organize it in this kind of augmented matrix. Now if we go back and think about, let's do simpler equations than these because these are quite complicated. If we go back and think about really simple equations like X plus Y equals four and X minus Y equals uh, minus 12. If you had just two equations like that, you get an augmented matrix, 1, 1, 4, 1, minus 1, 12. Um, so there's the equations, and there's the augmented matrix. You can read each off from the other pretty easily, this pair of equations and this augmented matrix, vice versa. Um, but it's easier to calculate with this. Still, we can see what, what happens if you have this uh, system of equations. One thing you could do is to, uh, if these are both true of, of variables x and y at the same time, if we have x and y values that satisfy both equations, then we won't change the x and y, uh, the solutions of the equations, by adding one equation to another. So we can, for example, um, we can add uh, minus of uh, the first equation uh, to the second equation. I'll write EQN for equation. That means I can take minus of minus one of everything in here and add it to here. What does that look like if you do it with actual equations? Let's do it. So the first equation doesn't change at all. I don't change it. I just add a multiple of it to the second one. So I add minus this to this is zero. Minus y to minus y is minus two y. Minus four to minus 12 is minus 16. So you can see what you're doing with the equations. Why is that important? Why is that helpful? because I knocked out the x, there's no more x's in here. So if I do this, I can get rid of uh, variables. I can have equations with fewer variables. This equation now has fewer variables. And if I can keep doing that over and over again, I can wipe out variables. I can use the fact that there's an x in this equation to force there to be no x in this equation. I started with these equations, they both have x's in them, but the x are showing up here, a suitable multiple of it will knock out the x here. When you add this to this, this to this, this to this, if I add minus one times, this to this, this to this, this to this, I wipe out that x. So I'll have fewer variables. And so what I end up with is that each step when I do this, I knock out some variable and I get a smaller number of variables. And I want to organize it intuitively. I want to organize it to step down, down, down like this. So you have fewer and fewer and fewer variables. If I had a huge system, I'd want it to become gradually kind of diagonal like this. So I'm knocking variables out from underneath them in a way that, that makes the variables go down in some sort of step form like this. So that's the idea. But of course, when we do it in, a, in, a, in an augmented matrix, it's actually easier because you don't have to write all the equal signs and all the variable names. You just say, well, I've got this one here, and I want it to kill off whatever's underneath it. So I'm going to add minus one of this row to this row. Minus one, row one, two, row two. And that way, I can see that um, this one is going to knock out what's underneath it the one that's underneath it. And that's the, 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 the theory that's behind it, right? We're just going to take a multiple of one equation to another equation, and that's perfectly fine. It doesn't alter the solutions of the system, because if both these equations are satisfied, then it's adding them up to get a new equation that's satisfied. So that's no problem. So I can always do that. I could reverse steps by subtracting again. So it doesn't change the solutions. And so that's a perfectly legitimate step. But when you express it in terms of the augmented matrix, it just means you get to add any multiple of a row to any other row. And you can use it to knock stuff out. We think of this guy as trying to kill off uh, all of his compatriots in, in the same column. This guy here is killing everything underneath it in that column. So that's one thing you can do. 
is add a multiple of a row to another row from the augmented matrix, and what it corresponds to in equations is adding a multiple of an equation to an equation, which doesn't change the solutions. So it's perfectly allowed, but it makes the equation simpler. And in this case, it makes the augmented matrix simpler because we add minus row one to row two. We add minus that to that and get zero, minus that to that and get minus two, minus that to that, that should have been minus 12, uh, minus that to that and get minus 16. We obtain a new augmented matrix, which has the same first row, but now has a zero here. And this way we've uh, judiciously produced zeros. We under, under entries that are non-zero, we can produce entries that are zero, and we can make a simpler form of matrix with more and more zeros going down, down, down like that. So we might ask, what other operations are we allowed to do on linear equations when you face a big system of linear equations? Um, there are three things we can do. One thing is obvious, we can swap rows. Um, that's easy because that just changes the order in which the equations are written down. So if I have equations like, um, well, if we have our equations x plus y, x minus y equals, what did we have before? We had uh, 4 and minus 12. Um, we could write them in the opposite order, and that would be fine. Minus 12, x plus y equals 4. It doesn't change anything with what the answers are if you write them down in a different order. And that means that when you're doing it with matrices, that the augmented matrix that represents those equations, then uh, you can uh, you can swap rows. Um, okay, so it doesn't really do anything. We can go back and forth between equations and augmented matrices. We can see that writing the equations in a different order doesn't change the answers. And so writing down the rows of the augmented matrix in, in a different order doesn't change the answers to the original linear equations. So we're allowed to do that. Another thing we can do is to um, is we can scale a row by a non-zero constant across the whole row by a non-zero uh, constant. Why doesn't that change the solutions? It doesn't change the solutions because you could scale back again. So if we do our our example again this pair of very simple pair of linear equations, what I could do, I don't know why I'd want to, but if I decided I wanted to, I could uh, do something like multiply um, row. Well, let's suppose we weren't given these. Suppose we were given and said 2x, 2y equals 8. That's a better example, where you'd really want to actually get rid of a factor of 2. Because I can see there's a factor of 2 all the way across, and I don't like it. It would be much more like the other, like the other equation if I could get rid of the 2. So what I'm going to do is multiply row 1 by a half. I'm allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to add 15 to everybody across the row. That would change the answers. But scaling this thing, all the, all the both sides of an equation in half doesn't change the answers. And so as an equation, that would give me, um, that would give me the new equation would be x plus y equals 4. But also I'd have this one still, x minus y equals minus 12. So as equations, you can see you're allowed to scale an equation by uh, all the way across uh, the, both sides by any number, in this case by a half, to get rid of all those factors of 2, if I wanted to. You don't, may not want to, but you're allowed to, um, and sometimes you have to. The augmented matrix of this system would be um, 2, 2, 8, and 1 minus 1 minus 12. And we would multiply, let's say we multiply um, row 1 by 1 half, or divide by half, by 2. And uh, then you can do that across a whole row because it represents an equation. So 1, 1, 4. And this row represents this equation, 1 minus 1 minus 12, which hasn't changed. So we'll always write down the whole augmented matrix. Then we'll say what operation we want to do to various rows. And then we'll write down the new augmented matrix that it comes about from that result of that process. So I've started with this one, then I told you what process I used to get to this one, and so on and so forth. So we'll do step by step explaining what we're doing at each step and getting a new augmented matrix, a new augmented, ma new augmented matrix at every step, and it should get simpler and simpler. So let's do a complete simple example to see how we would use this approach to solve linear equations. I do want to point out again that this is an approach that's really suited toward large systems. If you had to by hand solve a large system, let's say for three or four or six or seven variables, you really wouldn't want to just muck around with linear equations and see if you come up with the answer. So let's start off with a system which is very simple. 5x plus 7y is 0, minus 3x plus 4y is 2. Now you could do this by hand without 
uh, all this theory without all these these theoretical ideas without these matrices and so on so it's not really a sophisticated enough example to to show off just how powerful the technique is but nevertheless let's see if we can do it using the technique so the first thing we do is we try and write these in, in a matrix 5 minus 3 7 4 0 2 that's our augmented matrix oh, with a maybe a slash here um, we've dropped the variables as soon as the variables because the variables are lined up the X's are all in a line the Y's are all in a line underneath each other that means that I can just write the 5 the minus 3 and I know that those represent the X the 7 the 4 those represent the Y and these represent the constants so I don't need to keep track of the, of the variable names and equal signs and that saves me writing which makes it less likely that I'll make a mistake now the first thing I want to do is to try and simplify this first column. So what I'm going to do is get the 5 to kill the minus 3 by multiplying, uh, taking 3 fifths of row 1 added to row 2. So I'll just write 3 fifths of a little arrow, that added to that. So, But I've got to do it a whole row at a time. I can't do it just by, by, by the, three, uh, the 5 hitting the minus 3. I have to worry about doing it a whole row at a time because each row represents an equation. And I want it to represent an equation that remains true. I want to make sure that whatever manipulation I do to these equations, when I turn them back into equations, they're still true. So they still have the same, the same solutions. So I take 3 fifths of, the, of this row to this row. I have to do operations a whole row at a time. And so what I get is, well, the first row hasn't changed because I'm only using it to manipulate the second row. Three-fifths of the first row to the second row will change the second row, but it won't change the first row. So I'll just write that down as it was. And then the second row, three-fifths of five is, th is three, as to minus three is zero. So you can see the five effectively kills the minus three. It's killed the minus three underneath it. It's a bit more complicated, though it's seven. Three sevens are 21, 21 fifths, four is 20 fifths. So I've got uh, um, to, um, I've got to calculate out what that gives me. Okay, so, uh, so I've got to work out what goes here. So I've got four, which I can write as, uh, if I want to use fifths, I can write four as 20 fifths. And I've got seven times three over five. So I've got to do four minus, uh, Sorry, four plus, uh, what am I doing? Four plus three fifths uh, of seven is 20 fifths plus 21 fifths is 41 fifths. So that's going to go here. And then um, this added to this gives you still two because it's nothing added to three fifths of nothing added to two. Okay, so that's the, how I get that first step going. Now, I don't like to look at this 41 fifths. It's quite messy. But what I can do is multiply um, this row by 5 over 41. So I'll multiply that the second row across by 5 over 41, if I've got it right. Um, you can check my arithmetic and be convinced that, on, that I'm right or that I'm wrong. That should give me 1. And then this should give me 10 over 41, I think, um, and 0 here. And then. Um, I've still got to get uh, this this thing. So this thing can now simplify this guy. So this one here can be used to kill off the seven here. Um, that's the the philosophy. We'll go into more detail next time. What exactly? What choices I'm making and why? But let's get the one to kill the seven by saying I'm going to do minus seven of this to this of this row to this row. Minus one minus seven of the second row to the first row gives me um, well the minus seven zero is zero add to five is still five. The second row didn't change at all, so I'll keep it as it was. And the first row, minus 7 of that to that is 0, uh, but now it's complicated. I need minus 7 of this to this is minus 70 over 41, I hope. Okay. So now um, I want to divide off the 5 because I don't like this complicated 5, so I'm going to do one fifth of this row uh, across this row and get an answer that looks like 1, 0, um, what am I going to do if I divide by 5? 70 over 5 is 14. Minus 14 over 41, I hope. And then 0, 1, 10 over 41. Now, it's possible I've made mistakes in the arithmetic. I'm not going to worry too much about that. You get the basic idea of the kind of manipulations we're doing. And what does this do when you turn it back into equations? It says 1x plus no y's equals minus 14 over 41. No x's plus 1y equals, so y equals, 10 over 
41. So I'm not sure I've got all the steps correctly because I could easily mess up the arithmetic. But the idea is very simple. We start off with a whole mess of, of, of linear equations. Usually we're interested in ones that have lots and lots of variables. We write them down in a huge matrix. In this case, quite small, but in, in other cases, much more complicated. And then we try and get elements in various columns to kill the ones underneath them. The 5 wants to kill the minus 3 to make it into a 0. So it kills it by 3 fifths of this to this. We kill what's underneath the 5 and so on. Then the 1 decides to kill the 7 and we can add multiples of, that, of its row to the previous row. That won't mess anything up because we've only got zeros over here so it's not going to mess up the 5. So the 1 gets to kill the 7 and that becomes a 0. And once I've got all this killing going on I get typically just a nice uh, diagonal uh, of non-zero values and then everybody else is all zeros above the, 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 the murderous one is a, is a zero, the five murdered everything under it, so it's a zeros here. So you get all these zeros everywhere and then these non-zero values down there which you can you can scale to get that five to become a one by scaling by one-fifth. So we scale them and we get this kind of picture and this is typically what happens that we get uh, one of each variable, one x, one y, and so on and so forth, there are more variables, equals some value. We find out exactly how to solve the system. So it turns back into linear equations, which are just writing down the answer for you. So that's typically what we'll see. And we'll do a more sophisticated treatment next time, where we'll actually try and figure out what sort of strategy should we pick in order to make this thing uh, go into a solution as fast as possible with as few steps as we can. Because it does turn out that for complicated systems, you actually want to think about strategy to make sure that you get the answer as quickly as possible and therefore make as few mistakes in the exam as possible.